Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a paired samples t-test, including testing for the assumptions. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data. I have an ID variable, a pretest, and a post-test. And in this data set, there are 40 records. So let's assume that the pretest and post-test contain scores that were generated by the same instrument. So in this case, let's assume the instrument was a measure of anxiety level with a higher score indicating a higher anxiety level and a lower score indicating a lower anxiety level. And that each ID number represents a participant. So in this case, if we go to participant 1001, the participant took the pretest and a 52 was observed and then took the post-test and a 44 was observed. So we would note in that case the anxiety level decreased. So between the administration of the pretest, the administration of the post-test, we would deliver some form of treatment, some form of counseling that we would believe to be effective in treating anxiety. So if we're trying to determine the effectiveness of our treatment, and we want to use the participants in a pretest, post-test format with the treatment in between, we could conduct a paired samples t-test to determine if there's a statistically significant difference between the pretest scores and the post-test scores. But before conducting a paired samples t-test, we want to check the assumptions. In a paired samples t-test, the dependent variable must be continuous. So it must be measured at the interval or ratio level. Now remember these scores were produced from the same instrument. And in this case the instrument does produce continuous data. So we've met that assumption. We also need dependent observations. The paired samples t-test is also referred to as the dependent samples t-test because for each participant we need to have two scores. So the scores are matched or paired. We have that here, so we've met that assumption. The paired samples t-test also assumes that the participants are randomly sampled from the population, and we'll assume that's the case here. And the last two assumptions deal with the differences between the dependent variables. These differences need to be approximately normally distributed and not contain any significant outliers. So in order to test for this assumption, we're going to create a new variable that represents the difference between the pretest and post-test scores. And to do this, I'm going to go to Transform, Compute Variable, and for the target variable, I'm just going to name this variable Difference. The numeric expression here to the right is simply going to be the pretest minus the post-test. I'll click OK. And you can see we have a new variable named difference, and it represents the difference between the pretest and the post-test. Notice some of the values are negative. And now we're going to test this variable for normality and for outliers. And we can do that from analyze descriptive statistics, and then explore. I'm going to move just the difference variable over to the dependent list list box. Under statistics, I'm going to check off outliers and click continue. And then under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram. I'm also going to check off normality plots with tests and click OK. And there'll be no changes under options and then click OK for Explore. And first we're going to try to evaluate the normality of the distribution to see if the distribution is normally distributed. So I'm going to take a look at the skewness. You can see that's fairly close to 0, 0 0.038, and the kurtosis here negative 0.944. There are several different guidelines for evaluating skewness and kurtosis when referring to testing for normality. 
One popular guideline would be that the absolute value of the skewness doesn't exceed 0.8, and the absolute value of the kurtosis does not exceed 2. So we're OK in both of those variables, skewness and kurtosis. Moving down, we have the test or normality. You have Kolmogorov Smirnoff and Shapiro Wilk. We would decide in advance which one to interpret, and I interpret Shapiro Wilk. So the value here, the p value, is 0.223. So the result is not statistically significant, and that would suggest that these data are normally distributed. Taking a look at the histogram, we can see certainly not a perfect normal distribution, but generally we can see the shape, the bell curve, in this histogram. And then moving down to the normal QQ plot of difference, what we're looking for here is that these points are fairly close or on this line, and for the most part, they are. So we would say the assumption of normality was satisfied, that we are working with normally distributed differences. As far as detecting outliers, scroll down the output further and you can see we have a box plot and there's no points plotted above the top whisker or below the bottom whisker. So we would say there's no outliers in this distribution. Now that we've satisfied the assumptions for the paired samples t-test, we can conduct the test itself by going to Analyze, Compare Means, and then Paired Samples T-Test. And this Paired Samples T-Test dialog is going to come up. You can see it starts with Pair 1. I'm just going to put Pre-Test into Variable 1 and Post-Test into Variable 2. I'm not going to make any changes under Options. Click OK. And here are the results for the Paired Samples T-Test. We can see here that the mean for the pretest was higher than the mean for the post-test, and the standard deviations for the pretest and post-test are fairly close together. And then moving to the last table, for the p-value we can see it's 0 .000, so we would say that's statistically significant because that's below 0 .05. If you want the exact value for the p-value, you can double click on that table and then double click here and you can see it's 0 .000003. So that's five zeros to the right of the decimal. So if we were to interpret this in terms of percent, it would be three zeros to the right of the decimal. So it would be 0.0003% that we could have observed these values through random error alone. So again, we would say there is a statistically significant difference between the pretest and post-test scores. I hope you found this video on conducting a paired samples t-test in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.